my subscriber Rock Povs requested in the comments this morning if I could uh, kind of break down and show you uh, some of the essential tools here and what the purpose is. And I will, we'll cover everything in detail, but just to give a kind of a, a quick summary, these are the spiders that we covered yesterday and I've got these all set and I've got my 8,000s, 10 and 12,000s. That will cover all the saws that I have to file. So we all know how those work. More on that in the future. Of course, we've got our joiner, combination joiner, pin gauge. Actually, these tools, I didn't mention this yesterday, they, they'll do three things. They'll actually act as a jointer as well, which means you can put a small piece of a file in there. You can lay a file, let's see if I have one here. You would take a file and lay it in there like that. And then this would set screw would tighten and you could actually use this to joint. These terms may not mean anything to you right now, but, but they will in a minute. There's a short, a short, using a short joiner like this has some serious um, uh, disadvantages. So to get around those, uh, I'm going to show you a very special tool today that you're likely to never be able to own or even see because they're no longer being produced as far as that's what I was told when I got this. I believe I got one of the last ones that were ever made. This obviously is not an old tool. It is uh, made using the latest technology, um, CNC machined, and it is an exquisite work of art. Just to show you the details, this is an aluminum housing and stainless steel runners. And you can see even in here, you see those set screws which retain the file? Steel inserts into the aluminum. It is beautiful. It is aviation grade quality uh, made by an aviation engineer. This is modeled uh, after the famous Gibbs joiner, which was produced uh, about a hundred years ago. They're still available today, but they're exceedingly rare and they're exceedingly expensive and no longer produced. So there's only a finite amount of them. So this uh, was produced, if my information is right, I think it is, by a retired uh, aviation engineer, and I'm sorry, I forget his name, produced these off the original plans, improved upon them using modern technology and modern materials and such, and, and made these available. Uh, what I heard was he had since retired and these are no longer being produced. So. If you ever want to file saws, uh, you'll want to have either one of these or a Gibbs joiner. So I feel very, very fortunate to have it because um, it is um, an, a beautifully built piece of equipment. Next is going to be files. Files are really important and those of you who have tried to find good files know that they are very difficult to find. I feel very blessed uh, to be able to share these files with you. Again, these are something you're probably never ever going to see again because they are no longer being produced. These two boxes are uh, old, vintage, new in the box, saw filing files made by the Simons and Company. Simons is the same company that makes the crosscut saws. This saw right here, the Royal Chinook line, the finest saws ever built. And the, this box here is made by the Nichols Company, and these are in their original boxes. And these were gifted to me by a subscriber who came across them and asked me if I would want them. And I couldn't say yes fast enough. Beautiful, beautiful files. And not only are they just nice files, but they're specifically made for saw filing. So it's just beautiful. Look at that, the gold seal, Simon's files. You can always tell a Simon's file because it has a red tang. That was kind of their, their trademark. But here we are in the original waxed paper. Oh, it just gives me, it, it gives me, it gives me literal goosebumps right now. Never had been, never been taken out. Look at them. These are, were made for filing saws for the rakers. They should be all the same size. The triangle fives, there's a little bit smaller ones here. Oh, I feel very fortunate to have it. And I, and I only use them and I save them for my very, very special saws because they won't, they won't last forever. And once they're gone, they're gone. Irreplaceable. The Simon Red Tang. Man, that's some good stuff. Just, just, just wonderful. Here we have eight inch 
mill bastard files for pointing up teeth. Look at that. They just don't even feel like the files you get today. They're sharp on the edges. Look at the forging. You can see the heat treating in it. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, this, this is as good as it ever was. It, it's just irreplaceable, just irreplaceable. So these files here and what, typic, what, what you would typically use for pointing up the teeth and doing most of the work on the saw is, is an eight inch mill bastard file. And what that means, there's three things in there. The eight inch is the, is the length of the file. You'll find them in six or eight or 10 or 12 or 14. They come in lots of lengths, but this is perfect because it's, it is a really manageable in the hand. It's a, it's a good size. You can use two hands on it. You can get a lot of force and pressure on it, but it's not too big that it doesn't feel clumsy and it's long enough where you can get a nice long stroke. The mill portion of it means the shape of it. So it will come to a very slight taper on the point there. When you see that, that's a mill file. The bastard, refers to the coarseness of it, how it was cut. It's not a fine, and it's not a coarse. It's neither one of them, it's a bastard. It, it can't be put in those categories, it's in the middle, it's in between. So that's what, that's what that means. The tang here, of course, is designed to fit in a handle. So we have all different types of handles, and uh, I've got handles from uh, my grandfather that I'll be using on this that I got from his thing. So these, again, uh, are a treasure, 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 and are only to be used on my, on my best saws. So that is the essential tools. We'll, we'll be introducing some other ones pretty soon. One last one I'll, I'll share with you that's because it's kind of fun and I really feel lucky to have found it. This is a, uh, a Simons, the same company that makes the files and the saws. It's a Simons saw filers gauge. And it has all the different, uh, uh, you can check the thicknesses of the sheet metal. A good saw, a crescent ground saw like a Royal Chinook, will have five different gauges in it. And if you want to know more about that, I go back to my saw filing um, playlist and I cover that in, deal, in, in detail why these saws are so special. And they can't be produced anymore because the equipment is long since gone. This particular saw here that we're working on uh, on this series, uh, I've named Megan. Uh, the reason why I call some of the saws female names, it would have been customary for these, uh, the, the cutters and the saw filers to name each saw and they were named after females. And the saw filers themselves would just tell you, we don't know why, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but every once in a while there was just a saw that was really special. There's something about it. It just cut better than the other ones. It was just almost a magical saw and it was in high demand and it went to the best cutting crews. And I feel like I have that one of those particular saws, I don't have a lot of comparison, but the saw that I got from my grandfather, which I've named after my grandmother Wanda, uh, is one of those saws. It was actually, when I received it, had never been filed. It's an Atkins and it's in brand new condition. And when I took it to the class and we tested it out, because you test a saw, before you file it, just to kind of see how it's performing. And you can tell a lot about the saw from the shavings that come off of it. Um, we were really surprised to find out that, that, that it had never even been set, the teeth. So it was absolutely brand new and it is a treasure beyond words. And I'll show that with you, show that to you um, in future videos. There, uh, no, let's keep going about the tools. We're not gonna do any filing today. Whoops. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about some of the tools. <clears throat> Another one uh, that I was a tool that I was very fortunate to have, and uh, good luck finding one of these, is um, an original. I think this is. I don't remember if this is a Simon's hammer. I knew it one time, but I forget. But it it's a hammer made for swaging, and swaging is the process where we have to very carefully and very precisely hit the raker and bend it over to the top of our pin gauge. And it is a uh, very scary process, especially when you're working on a saw that's as special as some of these, or a family saw like Wanda is. One wrong hit, to strike it wrong, you can break the raker off, you can essentially destroy the saw. Every hit, you run that risk. It is not an enjoyable process, and especially for those of us who don't do this all the time, it makes it even worse. But this saw was designed to aid in that and its shape and its handle is very, very specific or job oriented. 
this saw, the handle was bad, or this hammer, the handle was bad when I had got it, but I got it from an old saw filer, and the new ones just can't compare. And, and the way that the handle is shaped, you can right here, this is the handle that I made, but I copied the original handle to the nth degree. Um, I traced it out, I tested it, every bit of it is exactly the same as the original saw filer's hammer. And you can see that shape. It's got a, a kind of a palm swell in it. And you can, there's something about it. You know, when you grab it and feel it and you're working with it, you have total control. The ridge on the top and the shape of it gives you a, a, a you can, um, what's the word, you can index it. So just the subtle little differences when you're moving it, you can feel it. So, you know, it's, there is just a hundred, maybe hundred years of, of expertise and evolution that went into producing not only the shape of the head and the size and the weight, but the handle itself. And when I was, when I got that and still had the original handle, I thanked my lucky stars uh, that it did because I, w I wouldn't have been able to produce it. And you don't realize, and you don't think about these things when you buy a hammer at a big box store, you think a handle is a handle is a handle, but it's not. But rarely are we, are we called to use a hammer in a situation where it's so critical. So that having that advantage of the shape and, and something that works well with the body and works with a hand that is specifically built for a job is, um, is something we re you really need to look after and, and to, if you can preserve it, do. Uh, it's got a little bit of damage on the corners, but overall, um, I'm not going to complain about that because it's, uh, I feel very fortunate to have it. I needed a heavy hammer. This is a, this one is a pound, I believe, maybe a little over a pound. This is a reproduction by a company that's making them today. I ground their name off of there because I would not recommend their tools. Um, they're of very poor quality. I have not been able to find um, a proper uh, set hammer. And a set hammer is what we'll use. We need something that has a little bit more weight to set the teeth because they're really hard and they need to bend over. So I, I looked and looked and looked and, and an original set hammer, is, this is a copy of it. It's very similar, but this is a very poor copy, but it's all that I have. And so I will use it. You can see just from the casting and the way it's made and no attention paid to the handle. Um, it, it's not great, but it, it's all I have and I will, Lord willing, I'll find one someday. But until then, um, that's what I have. So if you see this, this is not proper. It's just the, the best I can come up with now. So that's probably enough. That's a, I bet we're 10 minutes in so far. So we'll uh, start jointing and we'll actually start working on the saw in the next video and you'll see how this long jointer works and why uh, it is uh, such an essential tool to do, um, to, to do a good job on your saw.